My name's Al Miller and I'm a journalist and a poet and this is my short film for Ulster Scots Language Week. I'm here in Strabane uh, at Abercorn Square beside the sculpture of uh, Brian O'Nolan, better known as Flan O'Brien. He was a playwright, novelist and satirist and one of Ireland's greatest literary figures of the 20th century. Across the way there, uh, other Strabane notables uh, are remembered The other significant literary figure uh, with links to Strabane is Cecil Francis Alexander, the hymn writer who was writing in the 19th century and she is uh, remembered on this sculpture, The Departure, here with other notables from the town. Uh, her hymns, Once in Royal David City, There is a Green Hill Far Away and All Things Bright and Beautiful are well known to this day. But one significant literary figure is not present in any of this public art in Strabane. Uh, and that is the Ulster Scots poet William Starrett. He was born around 1700 and he has a small but significant niche in Ulster Scots literature for two reasons. Firstly he was the, the first poet to be writing in Ulster Scots in Ireland about Irish subjects and secondly he wrote a verse epistle to the famous Scottish poet Alan Ramsay who helped stimulate a renaissance of Scots language writing in Scotland at the early part of the 18th century and Alan Ramsay thought that Starrett was good enough to actually respond. Starrett in his epistle uh, places himself on Crohan Hill which is a hill just beside Lifford where we will go, be going to shortly. Now that we've left the blue skies of Strabane for the grey mists of Lifford uh, and got some of the historical background uh, dealt with, uh, we can come here to Crochan Hill uh, and get to the, the substance of this little film, which is uh, the preoccupation of a number of poets over the last 300 years with this hill. Starred himself, who styled himself as the Bard of Crochan, uh, Ramsay, who validated that, uh, and then a chap from Newton Stewart called uh, David Cahoon who wrote a poem, a Epistle to the Crochan Bard, a homage to Starrett uh, that was composed a few decades after Starrett's death uh, in 1812. And then uh, the tradition goes on and now we're at the present day and I have my little bit to add to everything. I one day, day last week I'll ne'er forget, I think I hear the hail stains rattling yet. On Crohan bus my herdsel took the lee, as e'en would bush just a ah beneath my e. I in the build of yon old brick tree side, poor coildrife collie whinged beneath my plaid. Right cosily was set to ease my stumps, wheel happed wi bounteth hose and twa soiled pumps. Sign on my four hour luncheon chewed my cud. Sick kilter pat me in merry mood. My whistle frae my blanket nook I drew and lilted o'er twa three lines to you. It's the uh, one these flocks beside him. He's well happed up. Uh, the weather's bad. Uh, and then he, he takes out his whistle, which is the metaphor for to compose, uh, and away off and he writes the lines. Though, of course, he didn't actually do that in reality. Alan Ramsay must have been suitably impressed with this epistle from William Starrett because he writes one of his own back and the first part of it again puts himself in the pastoral tradition and he's going up a hill too. Uh, Fae fertile fields where nae cursed ethers creep to stang the herds that in rash buses sleep where fray, where St Patrick's blessing freed the bogs fae tades and asks and ugly creeping frogs. Welcome to me the sound of Starrett's pipe Welcome as Weslin winds or berries ripe. When spilling up the hill, the dog day's heat, gars a young thirsty shepherd pant and sweet. Thus while I climb the muses mount with care, sick friendly praises give refreshing air. And so it's very, very cordial. 
and uh, he finishes up the poem. I have a tryst with her and man away. Then you'll excuse me till another day when I've mere time for shortly I'm to sing some dainty songs that sail round Crochen Ring. So again he's, he's uh, mentioned Crochen. Really validating Stat's uh, literary pretension uh, in, a, in a quite a close and uh, cordial way. It is believed that Stat died around 1768 and a few decades after his death. An other Ulster Scots poet called David Cahoon from Newton Stewart penned his own epistle to the Crochon Bard. So Starrett had already established somewhat of a legacy, he was uh, remembered basically. And part of this runs, I aft he viewed Oil Crochon's side where Starrett with his flocks did bide, and aft in philosophic pride his skill di displayed, twas there the deathless Bardy wooed the heaven born maid. Lang brother Bardy, very lang, O oh, may I hear your happy song, Resounding way the grateful twang, O oh, wit and fire, And may the friendly sister still your pipe inspire. The earliest Ulster Scots poetry in Ireland, the coll a collection of poetry as opposed to an individual poem, is contained in an Ulster Miscellany in 1753 in a section called Scotch Poems. It is not clear where, whether Starrett wrote any of those, but uh, there's not too many contenders for who it might be. And uh, one of those poems is called Sisyphus or Human Vanity. Now Sisyphus is from Greek legend and it is uh, quite famous that the gods made him roll a boulder up a hill and it would roll down again for eternity and he would roll it up and it would roll down again as a punishment for trying to cheat death and for trying to fool the gods. And Stat or whoever wrote this uh, used this as a metaphor for the futility of people seeking riches and grandeur because death or fate will steal it from you. And this is the opening section of that. Sisyphus or human vanity. I pity the aspiring chill, while wad to wealth and grandeur spiel, while uses eyes art and skill to row his meanteth up the hill. For when he gains the highest ground, nay rest and place will there be found. He will, as others aft he prieved, O eyes wroth be quickly reaved, for death or fate at make they met wither, ne'er lets them bide or lang the gither. But as the righteous judge thinks fit, takes it fame or him fate. The genesis of this poem was in a social media conversation. Now the conversation in the Facebook group uh, centred around meanteth and what meanteth meant. It's not in any of the dictionaries and no firm conclusion about what it meant. Uh, was reached. I thought to myself, that's one of the curveballs that Scots language sometimes throws at you. Uh, probably due to the lack of standardisation, then people are very creative with the words that they can use. And not only that, the poetic form itself is also very, very flexible with regard to how people use language. And these words, like minteth, can just start and take on a life of their own. And I liked the thought of that, and thought I would play around with it. And this is My Meanteth and Me, featuring the author and another from the Ards Peninsula. My meanteth rests on Crochon Hill, surveys their ban like Bardic Bill. The hind of Ablins did screeve his full on Sisyphus, the Greek we Ulster Scots and Quill, and Little Fuss. Me and my meanteth spiel together, fi Lifford Brig, in oddest weather. Sweet and hard for he's nae feather and country rare, for once he's up, there's nae known tether, we'll keep him there. O twitchy meanteth, I man haste to pen me thoughts and mack the maist. O this brief time to screeve the beast, for ilka quiver could be the thing that starts the chase back to the river. My canny meanteth's high aboon, a corby craw the flies aroon. My fragile heart and grounded shoon on sleek at whirl. Keeps back the gape and coof and loon, would vex his carl. My boorish meanteth is the champ that steers me through the social swamp. Gaze muckle wans the idiot stamp, the boorin' fools, whose whitterin' gaze lugs the cramp, the walkin' mules.
My waifle meanteth sharps as sticks, again ilka form, progression ticks, ilk bonny plan he aye for sex, as futures foe, and disavows what reason makes, we resounding no. My dealish meanteth is a yoke, to snook and scoob and rut at hook, and slink awa fi other folk, to be no ways, lay strapple thick we churnin book, and purteth cries. My springer meanteth sudden strains and surges fat, again his reins, the testy hind o'a terrains, kicks o'er the brew, to what the awful sight pertains, will hitty rue. A stain slow spills up crohan's swards, hard heaved by yin without regards, for any thing but dogged yards, we heels dug in, Lord a bean, it's the man for yards, it's Robinson. Man and meanteth come to savour, and he a bonny cryptic cleaver, and lag and scots we a its flavour. Fair fay I ca, come and sit a while and haver about Donegal. The doctor staps and mopped his brow, trigs his wheel, his arms allow. This cursed thing's a muckle sow, he grim convides, and asks a hand upon the now, which I oblige. Straight awa my meanteth trumbles, doon the hill he wildly rumbles, I make farewell and sorry mumbles. To fill up and haste, then aft to Lufford brig and tumbles. Oh, what a waste! Postscript. To a meanteth sly near crohan fit, near spill the hill for worny fit, cause ilka ain judge the sunny sit the best of selves, just trumpery sat and what o't, sick happier elves. So, what do you think of this old Ulster Scots, Mrs. Alexander? Oh, worth a dabble, Brian. Did you have a devil yourself? Oh, I did, I did. Stumpy's brain was such an interlude to hymnology, a tale of murder and haunting. So it's just up by street? Most certainly. Mrs Alexander, I have a giant intellect, a giant intellect. And if I roll my intellect up Crohan Hill, will you sing me a song when I'm doing it? Well, I'm sure I could oblige. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. I am new an aspiring chill, what a crochon greed is spiel. My gagged buddies art and skill, man get my minteth up the hill. To row my engine up the bray, I'll schned my shanks and stumpy bay. I'll join the burkies at the tap, kicking down at hoose and shap. <laughs>